Yep. That's definitely prime. Everybody loves Prime, and I don't mean that in any sarcastic way. Even as a young child, after watching the first episodes of the Transformers cartoon, I knew that there was something special about this new hero. Hell, I didn't even know what the word Optimus meant, but I figured that it meant something important. And it sounded cool. So, when I went to the US in the summer of 1984, I had only one thing on my mind when I entered the hallowed doors of Toys R Us. Optimus Prime. I needed my Autobot Commander. That is after I got my Duke and Lady J. Hey, I was a big Joe collector back then as well. Fortunately, there just happened to be one last Prime on the shelf, which I grabbed without hesitation. And it was only when I finally opened him up at home that I realized something was off. Yes, Optimus Prime and his trailer were intact, but certain little things like the hose and nozzle that attached to roller and the rockets were missing. At that age, I had no concept of returns and repacks, but looking back, this was probably what it was. But you know what? I didn't care. I had Prime and he was glorious. Anyway, as expected, that Prime was a major source of happiness in my childhood. But when I moved into my teens and girls became the focal point of my existence, that Prime, along with all the rest of my toys, unfortunately were set aside and forgotten. It wouldn't be until years later that I would forever swear off girls and rekindle my love for toys as an adult. <laughs> Just kidding. I promise. I'm a well-adjusted grown-up, happily married, with kids. But yeah, so the year was 2003 and at that point, I was still single and kind of just dipping my toe into the whole toy collector pool. But the interest and curiosity was already there. And I almost reached a breaking point when the Japanese toy company Takara launched their Transformers Masterpiece line. And it came to no one's surprise that the first one out of the gate to get the Masterpiece treatment was the iconic leader of the Autobots, Optimus Prime. The first official Masterpiece figure, or MP01, was a huge deal for Transformers collectors. Back then, the majority of Transformers toys available were mass market releases based on newer cartoons and aimed mostly towards a younger generation of fans. Takara sought to produce a toy that catered more to the older collector, moi. The ones who grew up on the original 80s cartoon and who now had a reasonable level of disposable income to spend on more expensive toys. MP01 was a game changer in many ways. This was the first Transformer toy that gave us a robot and vehicle mode that were both pretty accurate to the Optimus Prime that we all knew and loved from the cartoon. MP01 was meant to be the ultimate representation of Optimus Prime in other ways as well. Standing at about a foot tall, he was big and heavy, composed of high quality plastic and die cast parts, reminiscent of all those old Japanese robot toys from the late 70s and early 80s. He was also very articulated with over 24 movable joints down to each individual fingertip, with his major joints even sporting working pistons. He also came with a slew of accessories from an energy axe that was only featured in one episode of the cartoon, a miniature version of Megatron as a gun that he could hold, and his matrix of leadership that could light up when stored inside his chest. Of course, for such a premium toy came a premium price at well over $200, which for a newbie collector like myself was quite a lot. Back then, I could never imagine spending that much on a toy, no matter how amazing he looked. So, I didn't. Instead, in order to scratch my Optimus Prime itch, I opted to get a smaller version a few years later. Released in 2006, the Transformers hybrid-style convoy or THS-02 Optimus Prime was quite a cool toy as well. He was also die-cast, highly articulated, and came with even more accessories than MP01, and more importantly, cost about half the price. Unfortunately, he was also less than one-third the size. And after a few weeks of fiddling around with him, the novelty of my purchase started to wear off. Fortunately, by this time, Hasbro had already released their version of an MP01 for the American retail market. While the US release sported some differences, like a lighter color palette, some battle damage deco, and shorter smoke stacks on the arms, he was basically the same toy as the original Japanese release. And more importantly, at about $100, he was significantly cheaper. Now this price tag was definitely more palatable for me, but I still hesitated. Until I came up on an offer I just could not refuse. A very good friend of mine, fellow collector, crafter, and all-around tool guy, just happened to have two US Masterpiece Primes in his possession, and he offered me a straight-up swap, his extra MP Prime for my hybrid style one. And for good measure, he even offered to lend me his Prime so I could fiddle around with it first. 
I remember just staring at him as he stood in the middle of my room. I couldn't grasp how such an amazing looking toy actually existed. Or more importantly, why the hell was I even hesitant in the first place? So a deal was struck and I finally got my hands on my very own masterpiece, Optimus Prime. Fast forward 8 years later and by this time Takara's masterpiece line was in full swing and after releasing masterpiece versions of a few more iconic Transformer characters including Megatron, Starscream, and Rodimus Prime to varying degrees of success, Takara decided that it was the right time to produce an updated and improved masterpiece version of Prime. By this time, I too had grown as a collector having moved on to collecting more toys aside from Transformers. Despite all the new toys though, the original MP Prime still held a prime spot in my collection. So much so that when news and pictures came out of Takara's new MP10 or Optimus Prime 2.0, I initially didn't feel the need to get him. Now for the most part, MP10 truly was an improved version of Optimus Prime. While some would say that his proportions looked a little off, the biggest thing going for him was his size. You see, prior to MP10, Takara treated their masterpiece line as a series of one-off releases. They didn't seem to really view the line as an all-encompassing line, and as such, side-by-side -side scaling wasn't that much of a big concern for them. So as a result, we got a really cool character like Grimlock, MP08, who unfortunately was way smaller than MP01 Prime. Takara sought to remedy this by kind of soft rebooting the line starting with a smaller sized Optimus Prime that would scale better with most of the previous releases and more importantly, moving forward, future MP releases would scale with this new Prime. Still, I wasn't convinced and I completely passed on the initial release of MP10, much to my regret later on. As my masterpiece collection grew, as much as I loved MP01, he started to really look more out of place. By this time, however, both MP10 and the inevitable cheaper US retail version had shot up in price. So for the longest time, MP10 became the white whale of my collection. It took a good four years from the original release date for me to finally find a decently priced one in the wild. During a trip to Hong Kong, I found a single piece just hanging out on the display shelf on some random basement store in Mong Kok. I didn't hesitate and purchased him immediately and even got a free can of Coca-Cola out of it special store promotion maybe? I remember hurriedly lugging that huge toy down the crowded streets of Hong Kong, breathing heavily with excitement. Hey, it was a fairly heavy toy, all the way back to the hotel. To date, one of my fondest toy collecting memories. Anyway, skip a few more years to 2018, almost another good 8 years since MP10, and there were now rumors of an imminent release of yet a third masterpiece version of Optimus Prime. By this time, the masterpiece line had been evolving even more. When originally conceived, the Masterpiece line sought to find the perfect balance between the cartoon and toy aesthetic. However, with each newer release, it seemed that Takara was moving more towards cartoon accuracy. This was really apparent with their version 2.0 of a Masterpiece Megatron, which was released in 2017. While size-wise he matched with MP10 Prime, stylistically it was like night and day. While Prime looked more like the original toy full of details, Megatron looked cleaner and closer to what he looked like in the cartoon. And so a few months later, it was official. MP44 or Masterpiece Optimus Prime version 3.0 was announced for release in August 2019 at a price edging towards $400. To be fair, he did look quite amazing and cartoon accurate, if that's your thing, and came with quite a lot of accessories, even more than the prior two versions combined. But still, for a single toy, $400 was still a hard price to swallow at least for me. So at the risk of this turning into another MP10 situation of regret, I decided not to pre-order this initial release. For such an important character, I figured that it was pretty much inevitable that reissues would follow. And so I closed up my wallet and left it all up to the fates to determine if a new version of Prime was in the cards for me in the near future. As my wife would often say, if it was meant to be, the universe would find a way to get him into my hands at some point. Little did I know that it wouldn't be long before the universe would come up with a solution, in a form that I least expected. But before we get to what the universe had in store for me, I hope it won't be a prime problem for you to like and subscribe to my channel. It will help me tell more stories and would be much appreciated. But if you already are a subscriber, thank you and please spread the word. So back to the story. It wouldn't be long before the third-party Transformers scene would come to the rescue with two very viable alternatives to MP44. 
first up was a company called Magic Square, who up to that point had been slowly making a name for themselves in the smaller legend scale Transformers market. So announcing a larger masterpiece sized Transformer was a bit of a head scratcher for many collectors. Anyway, their version was officially christened as MS-01, Light of Freedom. Then within a few weeks, another company called Transform Element showed off their new prime called TE-01 Op Leader. Now if Magic Square was a rather new company, until their official announcement, no one had ever heard of Transform Element at all. So while MS-01 would be Magic Square's first attempt at a masterpiece-sized figure, TE-01 Op Leader would be Transform Element's first attempt at a Transformer, period. Okay, so while nothing was really confirmed, it was widely speculated later on that Transform Element was actually connected to another more established company called Black Mamba, who are best known for making oversized and oftentimes improved versions of official Takara Transformers. But at the time, not many people knew this, so as far as most were concerned, including myself, Transform Element was a new player. Regardless of being new companies though, what they showed off was quite impressive, including their supposed selling price, which would be a little over $100 each, making both great alternatives for a more cartoon-based or at least updated Prime for a limited budget collector like myself. That is, if we were willing to take a chance on either Magic Square or Transform Element. Not wanting to pay the price for an MP44 Prime 3.0, this was the road I ultimately decided to take. That being said, now the next question was, which Prime was I willing to place my money on? Well, both Primes definitely looked more cartoon accurate and improved over the current official Masterpiece Prime MP10. They also looked quite different from each other. Magic Square's Light of Freedom was the more stylized looking of the two. He had a little bit more detail and was definitely a lot beefier in proportion. Transform Element was more slavish to the leaner and blockier cartoon look. Initially, I leaned closer to Magic Square's Prime, mainly because the company had at least done something before. While all their previous releases were all legend size, they were getting rave reviews from those who collected them. Transform Element had nothing to their name, so for me it felt like a bigger risk. But as the months passed, the more I compared the two, MS-01's beefiness started to look less attractive, while TE-01's more streamlined look started to grow on me. I eagerly waited for reviews to pop up on YouTube for these two primes, and when they did, they both actually got positive reactions. Good reviews aside, there were a lot more notable differences pointed out. First was the construction. MS-01 was a lot lighter, made almost completely out of plastic. TE-01 had more die cast in it, giving it a heavier and more solid feel. In terms of transformation, MS-01 was more straightforward, switching from robot to truck and back in the way that you would expect it to. Very close to Takara's two previous primes, actually. TE-01, on the other hand, was an eye-opener. His transformation was different. It looked more involved, but not crazy. More importantly, it looked innovative, switching between modes in a manner that I never expected. And with that, TE-01 definitely got my attention. As I started leaning towards Transform Element, I noticed other things that made me like it even more. Most notably was his chest area where the Matrix of Leadership was stored. Ever since the first Masterpiece Prime was released, it was pretty much a given that any Masterpiece version of Optimus Prime needed to have a chest opening gimmick to properly house the Matrix. While both Light of Freedom and Op Leader had their Matrix chambers, only Op Leader had a properly detailed housing, pretty much accurate to the 86 Transformers movie, which was something even Takara had never done. With MS-01, you could actually see the Matrix behind Prime's translucent truck windows on his chest, which I didn't particularly like. Hey, when it comes to serious collectors, details like this matter. Now while it wouldn't be fair to hold Magic Square to the same cartoon standard since it didn't seem to be their intention to begin with, comparing it to Takara's MP44, Transform Element looked even cleaner, especially his back which didn't have the oversized backpack of the Takara Prime. Another thing I preferred in Transform Element's design over Magic Square were the knees. In my opinion, MS-01 Prime's knees were, well, ugly. When bent, they sort of disappeared or at least looked rather lacking. On the flip side, Transform Element Prime's knees actually looked like proper knees when bent. I know it may seem like a little thing, but once I saw it, I just could not unsee it and it really bugged me to the high heavens. To my Filipino brothers out there, I guess you could say it made me e-knees. Sorry, I couldn't help it. And finally, we get to the truck mode. 
Just like his beefy looking robot mode, the back portion of MSO1's truck mode looked too big for me. And when viewed from the top, you could clearly see the legs, including Prime's crotch area, which remained intact, giving away that this wasn't an ordinary truck, but an actual robot in disguise. As for TE-01, part of its unique transformation involved taking apart Prime's crotch area so it was not visible at all in truck mode, giving a more streamlined vehicle. It was even way cleaner than MP-44, whose rear looked like a mess when viewed from above. To be fair, aesthetic preferences really boil down to personal taste. Some collectors prefer a beefier Prime, and so for them, Magic Square worked better. Magic Square is actually a better articulated toy and can pull off slightly more natural action poses. While he's no slouch in the articulation department either, Transform Elements Prime lacks one crucial bit, which is a proper rotation joint on the upper thigh, and instead, the rotation joint is located just above the knee. And while this does the same job, in some poses, it actually looks pretty off. Anyway, in the end, with regards to Op Leader, the good far outweighed the bad for me, so I decided to ultimately take a chance on Transform Elements Prime, and I was definitely not disappointed. While Magic Square's Prime seemed like a quality release as well based on reviews, I am glad I went with Transform Element for my new Prime. Since then, there have been even more options for a Masterpiece Prime, including a scaled-down, more reasonably priced MP44 variant, as well as the inevitable MP44 knockoffs. Even Magic Square came back with a much improved version 2.0 called Light of Peace. For now though, I'm quite happy with my op leader covering the Toon Prime slot in my collection. That being said, even after all these years, MP01 is still such an amazing toy and he has enough presence to stand on his own. And he brings me back to an earlier day of collecting when I was still starting out. As for MP10, given how long I searched for this guy and the happy memories connected to me finally finding him, I don't really foresee myself selling him either. Besides, I need a prime for both my 1984 and 1986 displays because that's how I roll. Anyway, while not on the masterpiece scale, I thought it would be worth mentioning another prime that appears to be yet another game changer in the Transformers collecting community. Following the trend of toy companies remaking and re-releasing their original 80s vintage toys with added articulation, Takara announced and released early this year their Missing Link Optimus Prime, bringing things full circle for many fans like myself. I'm not gonna lie, I was originally lukewarm over the concept. I mean, yes, it did seem like a cool idea, but it wasn't until I actually got it, opened the box, and messed with it that I realized just how special the toy was. It was definitely a toy I never thought I needed. But now? <laughs> I want them all! All Missing Link Transformers that the car turns out are now instant buys for me. This Prime really brought me back to the summer of 84, and at least this time around, I'm proud to report that my Missing Link is, well, not missing anything. Anyway, while I know you're mainly here because you love Transformers, how about switching gears and checking out the story here about another great leader just like Prime, this time from the X-Men universe. Or if you'd rather stay on course, how about another Transformers story over here? Either way, thanks for watching and hope you come back for more.